Hello and welcome to Adobe Live. Thank you so much for joining us today. If we haven't met yet, I'm Jordan Danae Ellis. I work on the Adobe Express community team and I am joined as always by the lovely Andy Lambert. Hi, Andy. Hello, Jordan. How are you? Good. Um, let's quick really intro ourselves. Um, like I said, I work on Adobe Express, but I also have run a business for the past 13 years. So I know a lot about making a lot of things and making them fast and making sure they look good, which is why I love Adobe Express. Um, and Andy and I specifically talk a lot about online marketing and saving yourself some time because we know not all of us have all the extra time we want to make all the things we need. So that's a little about me. And then Andy has like the other half of the marketing brain. <laughs> together, you. together we make a whole person. Yes, <laughs> yeah. that's right. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm Andy. And if we've not yet met, um, I'm, I was one of the founders of, of a software technology company, which Adobe acquired two years ago now. Time absolutely flies. Um, so kind of similar to Jordan, come from small business backgrounds, but naturally from a, from a tech perspective, uh, cause ends up being quite a different business journey versus scaling a, you know, a solopreneur oriented business versus a software business. Obviously they, they both have their own quirks of how you build that kind of business. And you learn quite a lot of marketing tricks and tactics when you look at it both sides. So together, as I say, we make a whole marketer, small business yeah. expertise, doing <laughs> a lot with a little and then uh, from taking something from an idea into becoming a multinational business that ends up selling to Adobe, which is, I think, a real perfect like a round trip that we both end up working on Adobe Express. Because to your point, Jordan, it becomes such a powerful tool for both business oriented marketing for those that have structured marketing functions and also for those everyday creatives yeah. where Maybe marketing isn't your your strongest suit, but it's something that you know you need to do to get discovered. So, I mean, Jordan, you spent a lot of time out on the road of late listening to people. I mean, what are the things that uh, people are generally saying that they're they're seeing most value from expressing? Yeah, um, literally right now, just did a workshop for uh, Alt Summit, which is like a women in business conference, and it's a lot of the time saving things. Like no matter what type of business you have, you have to make a lot of things and make them fast. And so anything that helps that is great. And perfectly leading into what we're talking about today, Adobe Express already had a bunch of great features for this, but there is a ton of new stuff coming out. I actually am sure I'm going to learn something from Andy today of something <laughs> I didn't know came out because you're always just a little more on the pulse of what is happening than I am. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of new things to talk about, which I am super excited to show off today. Definitely, definitely. So we're, we're going to be doing a bit of a tour of all of the shiny newness yeah. and express to, to your point, Jordan. So uh, we're going to cover that first. And there'll likely be things I forget. So I might end up coming doubling back on myself. Like totally. with these streams <laughs> that we do every two weeks, you know, they take on a life of their own. So we'll see what happens. But of course, you know, this is a really important time in the development of Adobe Express. And one thing I didn't actually mention, I, I work on the product team. So hence the reason I'm talking about some of these, these new features, et cetera. But what I'd love to get from, from the chat and anyone watching is like, what do you think of these new features? How might you find them useful? And also probably even more importantly, like, are there any things that you're missing? What are the experiences that you've had with using it, both good and bad? Because, you know, we're, we're here to make this product the perfect product for us all. So, you know, um, only you can help us do that. So with that, I'm going to jump into the screen share now. And, yeah, perfect. Uh, and I'm keeping an eye on chat. We have uh, Amanda, Elena, Elena, uh, Paula, ask us your questions if you have any. Um, and we didn't say yet, but if you're watching this as a replay, please feel free to ping Andy or I at any time and we'll try to get all your questions answered. So definitely. with that, I will let you dive in. So what's new? Right, let's hit it. Okay, um, so as I said, two parts to what we're gonna talk about today. First part, we'll just be doing a tour of all the, the, the new things, and then we're gonna go on and uh, create some social content together, some real life social content that um, I actually have to create anyway. So similar to you, Jordan, like you do in the previous streams, yeah. you end up basically doing your homework in class. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that's what we're doing. Um, but it just goes to show that we we use our own tools for our the own purposes of promoting the things that, that we're responsible for. So we're gonna come on to that. First things first, let's dive straight into it. Presentations. So you can now build presentations in Express. 
I'm so happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> this <laughs> is because I'm going to be honest, I have to make these all the time. And I end up just stealing like other coworkers decks because I, why I love Adobe Express, I really hate starting from a blank page. And so opening just like a blank, you know, whatever PowerPoint or anything is my nightmare. And so the fact that we have have a presentation option in Express now is the best. So good. I think it's going to be really popular. And it's a, it's, a, it's an important like next step for, for Express too. So the way you can start a presentation, a couple of entry points you can go to. You could go to a document here that we see on, on home and, and you can go ahead uh, and start building from a presentation that you see here. This will take you into a flow of uh, browsing templates and getting started from here. Uh, equally, you can press the little plus button, which is always one of my favorite ones to go to and just uh, I'm lazy. So I just literally just search for it and find it straight away. You could also search for it in the top bar too, but that will take you to the same kind of flow, allowing you to select from a range of presentation templates if you want to go through these. Now, this gets super powerful when you start bringing in some of your brand capabilities. Yeah. So naturally, you're, you've probably got some corporate slide decks or a slide deck style that you like the vibe of. This is where all your brand kit comes to the fore, especially when you're thinking about your fonts and the logos, which all are, are super important for these. But some of the templates, I think, are utterly divine. Um, I like... For example, this is obviously resonates with me as a kind of startup guy, um, a real nice structure as well. And not only I think the like templates in um, presentations like hit slightly different, I feel, because not only does it give us like some design uh, ideas, it also gives us better structure ideas Yes. because building a slide deck is a is a job, right? It's how do I tell the story? How do I unfold the narrative? What are the points that I need to continue or I need to I need to bring to the fore? But if you're if you're looking to you know pitch investors or a business partner, whatever it might be, we can just search pitch decks and they'll give you a guide of like here are the things that you could include in a pitch deck. Now that's like how that's valuable so nice. is that? That's I, I feel like you just cut out a really important part of templates that I always think but don't often say, <laughs> which is something I should add when I'm talking about this stuff. But it is exactly that. It's it's not just a template for what it should look like. It's exactly like doing the thinking of what has to be there. And then you just plug in your info. And you can obviously customize it. Like you can take any of these and move things around um, and switch the order of the pages. Like that's what's so wonderful about it. having that starting place though is exactly like, you see the story here. This is what, this is literally numbered, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, like just gives you all of those, like, I don't know, I guess kind of triggers to then like decide how you want to tell your story, but you don't have to start from nothing. And it's a backbone and it's great. Yeah, it's a great way of describing it as as the backbone. So, yeah. you know, as you're talking about, like looking at the slide view. So this is the the new user interface because there was some uh, presentation templates before, but we've now started to put all the wrappers around what you'll need as a presentation tool. So the ability to reorder, drag and drop slides. So the multi-page yeah. view um, just looks even more delightful, really like how this one's laid out as well. And, and you Nicola have... in the chat is saying clean, bold, and doesn't hurt the eye. So also accessible. <laughs> yes. Love that. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. So then you've got present mode, which is new as well. Naturally, yeah. you can't build a presentation if you're not going to present it too. So uh, I think that really, really helps. So just to give you an idea, because we started to, to use this already and start to build my own presentations here internally in a I Adobe feel like now. we're gonna end up seeing some uh get social slides being presented in <laughs> exactly we've got no excuse now Jordan for yeah. our slides not being on point and I think and another part of this this is why presentations work so well uh in Express is because this is something I was collabing uh with my team on because it's something that needs to be presented to the the rest of the the leadership team whilst I won't bore you with all of the content but you can see the other members of the team that are already in here looking at this. And if we can uh, look at the comments here, we can see uh, my colleague Emily calling out certain things. And I love the fact you click on the comments and it takes you to the slide. So That's it takes so you. Great. It's all in nice context here. We can resolve these comments and it just creates a really nice slick collaborative experience. And of course, 
you know, like with the rest of Express, all of the things that we were talking about and we have been talking yeah. about over the course of our our streams together, Jordan, like we could live co-edit together too, right? So good. This is such a good, like, uh, I feel like we talk about group projects a lot. Like that feels like something that was just, you know, in school, but this is such a good adult group project. I mean, and for students too, but like exactly when we work together, we do we do this all the time and then it's like cool you take pages you know three through six or like you can even mark with that comment um that you just showed like mark whose page is whose and it just saves so much time of like okay i'm sharing this version oops i updated this page and then you changed it and now we're working on different versions like it's all updated it's all automatically saved um and it is huge a huge time saver exactly that and it's like you know, it's compounded by the other things as well like the the benefit press this yeah. one click translate button you know if we need to speak and i mean yeah. we work in a global business right so yeah. if i need our, our colleagues in japan to have a view around what's happening in the future of you know social media features in express translate it to japanese send it to our colleagues like That's the, so the point about accessibility and a way of like inclusiveness in our content you know um Yes, other tools have got live co-editing and collaboration and present, but they have all the wrapper around of like of brand and translate and all of the like native feeling stuff that you get in your design tool. I think that's where it's yeah, it's super powerful. So that's awesome. Presentations. There you go. Number one. Number two. Now, this won't take me very long to demo because it's very, very quick. Um, but oh, my, has it been a heavily requested feature? So. Um, I'm just going to click into uh, into this. Actually, I'm going to come back to that Try design to guess later. Guess what you're showing. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to spoil this one. So actually, I'm going to create. Um, I'm going to create a, a new project, and I'm just going to put some text uh, on a slide here. I have no idea what. This what is a fun talk... game. I have no idea what you're. What am I going to talk about? Yeah, okay. I don't know. So I have no idea. It's going to seem very simple for everyone, but a uh, heavily, heavily requested feature. We can now hyperlink. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This snuck so, in there too. I'm so glad you're calling this out because it was just live. And I was like, where did this come from? It's so, <laughs> I'm so happy. I'll let you, I won't steal your thunder, but I'm no, so happy no. about this. This is, this is, this is shared thunder here because, you know, it, it's pretty simple. It's again, very well understood. Like, hey, why are you like waxing on about, about hyperlinks? It's one of those things that again, just makes express such a useful tool um yeah. because you're building flyers promotional templates because of course you know you can take your pdfs and convert them mm -hmm. into express documents naturally linking in those is a super mm -hmm. important thing and that just now means that you know we're, we're talking about the context of express through marketing lens yeah. can't really do much much marketing if you're not got call to actions and links in your stuff so yeah That's super great. important nice and easy to use as well um anything else you want to call That's out on so, that, no i'm just so excited about that especially yeah with the the pdf like you can you can import in a pdf you can export out a pdf and so the fact that these will just stay or you can add them is so nice yeah it's a nice little hidden love feature it. exactly exactly so um just to to preempt some questions right now so currently uh linking is only available for text uh but there are future plans to then link images uh, and link icons and other elements in Express too. But also um, all of that, those hyperlink capabilities also live in uh, web pages too. So uh, I don't know if, if many people use this. Well, actually, I know lots of people do, but n not many people are, are aware of this feature. This is one of those things that some people absolutely love, but many mm -hmm. people don't know it actually exists, which is the ability to make full web pages in, in Express, of which naturally you can put all of your hyperlinks. And we've added a lot more features and functions into these, particularly like the ability to add themes to make them feel like this it's on brand. So yeah. people use these not just for like web pages, but I've been you know really uh, inspired by some of the different use cases for this, for like students showing... Uh, their projects off you know in a shareable link which yeah. it then creates a really nice thing to share rather than sharing like a i don't know a google doc with with your colleagues why don't you share something that's much more expressive like a whole interactive web page that people can navigate around 
super easy to do. But of course, yeah, you've got the hyperlink capabilities in here now too. Awesome. Bit of a tangent, hopefully it makes sense. We have a, uh, Nicola also said, woo, I used Express to make my wedding invitations, which the hyperlink feature existed a month ago, but I'll take it now. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, if you have any older projects that you need to add this to, you can now, which is great. Love it. Love it. Great use case. It just goes to show like the breadth of, of Express because we we often, you, know, you and I and me in particular, I'm always like use it for marketing purposes, create social content, etc. Mm -hmm. But it's just so broad, so broad as well. So cool. Right. Next feature, I'm going to try and find a, a suitable product uh, or project that uh, will work for this. Unfortunately, most of my projects look absolutely terrible because I use them for <laughs> Uh, for testing purposes um do, do, do. let's go ahead and find something should have had one uh ready and raring to go but i'm going to take this one cool so um what we now oh, have yeah, this is from our old library right it is it is so, yeah uh, andy and i put together a how to use our templates <laughs> library a while ago any old school uh viewers are here you may remember that exactly exactly that um i'm trying to find the the right template to to use uh for this actually no this one will do so you'll notice that i've got a linked asset here in, in this one so uh a quick recap on linked assets these are mm. um creations you might have made in illustrator or photoshop that you've used in your express projects and the beauty of linked assets and this is one of the things that sets express apart is the fact that you change the source file of that. So if I yeah. change the Illustrator file, it's going to then replicate that and update that uh, that element or asset across all of the projects that you use it in. Imagine going through a rebrand and having to rebrand all of your content manually. No thanks. How about yeah. you use linked assets and then it will change it in one click. So very, very powerful. Now, what you also want to do if you're thinking about using Express from a brand perspective, you want to make sure that naturally everything stays on brand. If you've got colleagues you're working with, you want to make sure that you set some guidelines that they work within. Mm -hmm. You want to ensure that the brand standards are maintained beyond you as a designer or the CEO of the business, whatever your role is. So uh, you'll be familiar already that you can lock elements yeah. of of a design down so you can see that we've now locked it you know uh nothing nothing can be changed but you're going to notice uh, some new options yes. here we've got some new lock settings you can also right click and say lock allow replace so when i've done that it's essentially the same flow but right click or using the lock icon so this is all about control it's called controlled reuse so this now enables you to lock down certain elements of a template whereby let's say, you know, we've got this particular donut icon. The use case of it being a logo is probably not the right use case in this scenario, but hopefully you can kind of work with me on this. But let's say you've got a, a template where there are certain elements of the design you want to absolutely lock. So for example, image can't be replaced on this element. So we don't want to change that at all. Um, but maybe this asset here, we're going to lock this, but allow replace because naturally yeah. this is a template that it could be about, you know, another one of our donut promos, for example. So now we're going to lock and allow the replace of that. So that now allows only the replacement of this particular item within the template. Gold. This is, I feel like we talk a lot about, um, I guess, both sides of this, but using templates and then sharing them with your team. So like one person designs them and then they are shared with, you know, whoever, whether it's your marketing team or your social team. Um, and this is, I think, one of the most requested features from our design friends because it's like, cool, I want to share this template with you and I want it to still look mostly like <laughs> what I made. Like, I want you to be able to change it or else why would I share a template if you can't do things like change the text if you need or, yeah, swap out, you know, the, the frame is here, but you can swap out the image or you can swap out the colors and being able to set those lock settings, I think is gonna make a lot of people very happy. And then from the other side of it too, the user side, it's also really nice to just know like, cause I work with designers all the time. Andy and I will talk about, we are not professionally trained designers by any means. No. Um, and it's so nice, truly, I don't want 
to make my design friends mad. Like I want what I use their templates for to look a way that they'll be happy. So it's really nice for my side too, to be like, okay, I can't accidentally click and like shift things around. I know exactly what's supposed to move and exactly what's supposed to not. And that's very nice. So I think mm. there's win-win from both sides. Um, but I am extremely excited about this. Even like our YouTube thumbnails, like that was made from someone on the Adobe design team. And I was like, cool, I am just changing our, the colors and the title and maybe the photo if we get a new one every year. <laughs> that's yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a perfect scenario. And you can see like use cases for this will, I'm sure, jump out at you like continually as you think about your designs and, and workflows, yeah. etc. And, you know, I, I think the iconography here, <clears throat> excuse me, is just like super easy. So we know exactly yeah. these are our guardrails. We can't change that. We can change this. This is this is fair game. You know, yeah. so I think this is super useful because it's going to speed up workflows. We have confidence in like the design teams that know that, hey, we've got a corporately a, a approved thing. We've got a design that works. Don't mess with it. However, you know, for the people that just need to make quick content um, yeah. social content, you know, operating at the speed of social, for example, if you want to do that, we've now got guardrails to to put our process really on rails. And I yeah, I adore it as you can probably tell. But this is it's worthwhile calling out as well. This is the start of lots more to come around like controlled reuse. Um, we're, we're also considering things around like permissions, who can do yeah, what to, cool. to which. So lots more to come. Um, but yeah, very, very exciting for, for kind of team-based use cases. So nice for that, yes. Definitely. Right, where should we head next? I think... Uh, Let's go ahead uh, and head to something that's been out for a, for a little while. But honestly, it's one of those areas that doesn't often get discovered. And I still see lots of feature requests for this coming in, even though it's here. So we're going to head to video. And that's always so nice when you're like, we do actually have it. I can we answer, can answer this for yes, you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can do it. It's great. Exactly. And uh, I'm not sure why it's right at the end when it's like, quite possibly the most useful for me personally it's the most useful one out of all of them but yeah yeah it's the one video. i use the most too for sure convert to gif i use a lot too because let's be uh, honest that's very yeah. fun but yeah this is a big one it is is very much a big one so um super easy to use uh and it works on mobile too and for me personally right. we'll, we'll talk about mobile uh, in a second because we haven't talked about this kind of big yeah. thing that's happened with express um yeah, because suddenly, you know, if you think about it, you're shooting most of the video, I expect, especially for social on your phone anyway. So yeah. captioning on the go directly, uh, so, so powerful. Um, so now we've got that, which has absolutely collapsed my workflow because kind of embarrassingly, I was shooting on my phone, putting it on WeTransfer, like WeTransferring it over to oh, me so listen, I can put it on yeah. desktop <laughs> and then caption the video. Ugh. Yeah, um, the that amount just of adds. times I airdrop things to myself is all day, every day, but not anymore. Um, exactly. <laughs> yeah, anyone that does any form of social content creation will absolutely yeah. nod along at like the challenge of getting projects or media from one device to another. That all goes away when you can work across devices. But I'm going to come to that in a second. So captioning video, super easy, drag and drop. Uh, add it in you've got up to one gig to play with so um yeah should should be plenty so uh, to save you watching the the rendering this is one uh, i recorded yesterday but embarrassingly yeah that's a good um, call it does take a second like just just know that you can set it up and leave it for a minute depending on how long your video is because that's exactly to do, to yeah do some work exactly that so um here's a video I, I shot earlier um earlier in the day as you see it's kind of a little bit dark so uh we're going to fix this so we're going to show a bit of like end-to-end -end social workflow now and we're going to uh drop off into mobile in a second but let's let's show this this workflow first so I, uh answer two questions from chat yeah of course you can is this a good time to interrupt you yeah go um for it. So we are talking about templates a lot and Marty asks, are the Instagram templates suitable for LinkedIn? Video reels and images are what I'm asking about. And my answer is the templates are really set up. Well, I guess some platforms do have different um, requirements, but the templates are really set up because of the dimensions, but like mm -hmm. the content you can absolutely 
either use as is if the platform um, will accept it, like some platforms have certain requirements, but you can also use our handy dandy resize if you want to make something and then resize it for a specific dimension. I don't know if you have a different answer than me. Yeah, I think that's that's perfect. And especially if we're, if we're thinking about how do we make um, Instagram content or how do we make content that fits across all networks? Jordan, yeah. you and I have spoken about this loads. Man, yeah, make your life easy. Make it once and post it everywhere. Hundred <laughs> percent. And and really, there's there's two schools of thought, and there's no right or wrong answer. It all comes down to your individual preference. And uh, in the case of Jordan and I, like, how lazy do you want to be? So yeah, um, and you have options. You can be <laughs> pretty lazy. You can be a little more <laughs> ambitious, or you can do it like by the book, correct? Hundred <laughs> percent. So so if you're if you're starting with Insta, but you also want to get this out on uh, on uh linkedin for example and facebook um and also on x i would typically go for something that's square right if especially if you're talking about some static content put it square because that mm -hmm. looks fine across all networks we'll talk about scheduling uh, social content in a in a second actually so it's probably a nice segue to it but yeah. squares look pretty good it's a, it's a good rule of thumb but there'll be times where you think, OK, if you're publishing stories, reels, something that is uh, more uh, portrait in orientation, then naturally that's when we'll want to think, OK, uh, let's resize it to your point, Jordan, and we'll use the, the resize flows here and then resize this uh, appropriately. Right there for you. So it's great. And that will just create some different sizes to the project. There you go. Nicely adjusted. And, you know, um, and what I'll do, actually, rather than do that, I'll put it back to Instagram square, resize this. And then what I will do, and I will make this a TikTok video, and I'll duplicate and resize. So there you go. Mm -hmm. So a really nice way of, of optimizing the design based on whatever channel you want to publish it on. When we're talking about, about publishing, too, there's a, there's a couple of scenarios. I was going to cover this in a bit, but we'll, we'll cover it. Sorry to make it. you skip ahead. <laughs> No, no, it's, no, it's totally cool. I think this actually segues really nicely. I'll go back into the video stuff in a sec. Um, so on point one, if you're thinking, I want to put this square out, a square layout across multiple different channels, all good, nice and easy to do. We're just going to hit the share button. We've just got this uh, page uh, of our project selected and we're going to hit share. And then we're going to then uh, schedule this post because you could post it to individual networks, but this mm -hmm. one is all about putting it on multiple, maximizing our opportunity. Yeah. So we're going to schedule that post. Whilst that's uh, busy uh, uploading, um, I'll just call this new test for now. And here, oh, what do we see here, Jordan? <laughs> oh my gosh, it's the second, <laughs> the other most requested thing ever. <laughs> Look oh. at those two Facebooks and two Instagrams and two LinkedIn platforms. You can do multiple platform scheduling now or multiple profile scheduling. Sorry. Um, and this is massive because so many people run a Facebook page and a Facebook group or a, an Instagram for their main account and then also for a side account or also for a for, you know, a client or so many, so many different things. And now you can do it right here and Ugh. for free. This is free, which is super yeah. cool. It's, Scheduling yeah. is free. That is, uh, yeah, still still kind of unbelievable that we're able to I offer love that it. much value for free. But yes, yeah, so um, multi-account scheduling is now here, which from a social media perspective was the number one requested feature. And every single live stream that you and I have done, Jordan, since when we started doing mm -hmm. this about 18 months ago, um, we finally can say, hey, yes, you can. So um, we should go back to all those comments and be like, it's available now. <laughs> it's, done. it's done. So if you want to connect some more, because I haven't connected as many as, as we could, if we yeah. wanted to, you can open connections, add new, add another row so uh, and away you go. So re really simple, uh, natural and intuitive. So here's my, um, my personal creator profile on Facebook and a uh, fictitious company. Uh, we'll add new and I'm going to connect another one. This will then sync with, with Facebook. And then uh, that's what I very imaginatively called this one. This is a new test for <laughs> Look Andy. At your test names. So, that's great. Yeah. As uh, 
it naturally comes with the territory as you're kind of testing yeah, social no, media products you're I not having it. to create a few <laughs> accounts so there we go uh we've added another one um so with that we've now you can That's see this so new nice. new one it's just super slick so now we can think right we might manage multiple brands or we're trying to build our company and our personal brands at the same time so we can say, I want this one on that one, on that one, and I won't post it on this. Yeah, the customization there is so good. Like you can pick exactly what goes out where. And depending on, again, we talked about, you can do um, you can do as much of a time saver or like as uh, intensive of a marketing plan as you want. So you can post the same thing everywhere. You can um, go into, as you have like your different resized pages, you can schedule like, the horizontal for the you know more horizontal platforms you can schedule the vertical for like tiktok and instagram and then you can schedule the square out like you can decide how involved you want this to be um exactly but that's that. great that's exactly that so as we're here talking about scheduling let's let's go through some of this too you can add your hashtags here so you've got a little hashtag counter so you don't um go too wild with hashtags because uh, instagram don't like any more than 30 uh then so you please got... don't use 30 yeah, i mean you can no. but please don't <laughs> between three to personal five requests from me <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> thanks thanks for adding that um and then also if you want to mention any folk you can just type it yeah. uh, directly in here the only caveat to that is that um you will need to know their handle um so fortunately i've got yours committed to mind so there you go oh, there you are um then option to Instagram, first comment. So if you want to put any yeah. additional context in there, keep your caption clean, all that kind of stuff. Preview is always Preview your is so good. Preview is so huh? good. Don't sleep on preview. You can see what it's going to look like. You can see sometimes, especially for Instagram reels and TikTok, like something in the lower part of my design will be covered by the caption. So like, it's really nice to just see that. You, you can decide if you want to actually change it or not, which I usually don't. I just know it's going to happen and then I post it anyway. But that's up to you. Um, but you can see exactly what it'll look like uh, going live before it goes live, which is so helpful. That's exactly it. And it kind of goes back to, to what we were saying about um, the ways that we can post across multiple channels. So this, this is only one workflow. This is just us taking a square and putting it across multiple networks. But it's a nice way of just like double checking that is this going to look uh, good uh, and as we expect? So right now, I'm just going to save this as a draft. We're going to choose a date for it. I'll put it out for, for tomorrow, but it's a draft. We'll come back to that. We'll review this in our calendar. Um, and we're going to do that. Add it as a draft. Away it goes. That's in our calendar. We don't need to do anything else right now, but we're just taken straight back to our design. And this is when we can start thinking about uh, okay, so now we've got different layouts. So we could have just posted that singly to Instagram and said, you know, this one's going to be a story or real. What I'm actually going to do very quickly is add some uh, animation to this. So it's just going to immediately make it a video. I'm going to give this uh, a bit of a, a bit of a wiggle and slow yep. down the speed. There we go. So now we've very quickly turned something static into some animated content. Um, so that now means that this is ready to be posted uh, as a reel or even as a TikTok if we wanted to. Um, so what we're going to do is simply press the, the share button again on this and then we're going to go ahead and schedule the post. Again, we can take it to, to multiple different channels. We're going to put this on TikTok and we're also going to put this on, uh, on Instagram. We've now got an opportunity yeah, to... Yeah, that's cool. Those three options for Instagram are great. Yeah, I, I love this. I absolutely love this. So real or a story, entirely up to you. We'll leave uh, real for now. This is, of, of course, only uh, relevant to, to Instagram in this one. We've got the ability to edit a real cover if we wanted to, to switch that one up so we know exactly how that's going to look uh, in our grid as well to make sure we're, we're happy with that. Um, I'm going to add a bit of uh, some caption here. Uh, test... While you do that, oh, that's easy. Um, I was going to answer one more question. Uh, I think Damien asked in the chat, what's the difference between Adobe Express and Photoshop? Um, I'm not a Photoshop expert, but Photoshop is really intended and is built for photo manipulation. So if you want to do things like photo compositing and like intense photo editing, 
Um, Photoshop is great for that. You can do a lot of other stuff, but that's like what it's built for. And Express is built for essentially making marketing uh, assets quickly and easily. So there are components of Express that are like powered by other Adobe products. So there are things powered by Photoshop, you know, powered by Firefly. There are some video elements too. Uh, so the real difference is like if you want to make a collection of things like an entire social uh, campaign or a presentation or videos and have all of these different assets like at your fingertips built in. So it's built in Adobe stock audio, video, photos. It's built in templates. It's built in animation. Um, and then the social scheduling, like that's all in Express. And Photoshop has a lot of powerful, again, like Photoshop or sorry, photo manipulation and like compositing. Um, and you can make flyers and things in Photoshop, but to be honest, I think it's that's not what it's best at. Um, so you certainly can, but it takes a lot of the things that you can do um, in like Photoshop and Illustrator. If you want to do just kind of like standard content creation, it makes it just more streamlined and easier. I don't know if you have anything to add, but I wanted to answer that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you called it out. Uh, this this question does come up quite a lot, and I think it's just perfectly complementary. Mm -hmm. High fidelity in Photoshop, like the larger edits, lots of control, less control in Express, uh, but you know, light, quick edits, speed, simple marketing content, and really, yeah. you know, quite a typical workflow. If you looked at like a design and marketing function, a lot of design work happens in Photoshop then all the kind of brands and the libraries live in Express to allow the marketers to leverage mm -hmm. what the designers have built. All that controlled reuse comes into it, linked assets and all those kind of things are the perfect uh, intersection between, you know, the, the fidelity of design and then what marketers need for, for quick speed and ease. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a perfect complementary product. There's, there'll be some instances where they, they overlap and uh, Express is, takes away some of your Photoshop work um, in some instances, but there will be that extra level of fidelity and control. Photoshop is always going to be uh, always going to be that uh, stronger tool for that, for sure. Yeah, and just real quick, you can bring in Photoshop or Illustrator files and they'll convert into Express. So if you want to start something in Photoshop and then add your text or add your animation, you can. Exactly. Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> no, no, perfect call out, perfect call out. So. So now we, we've just been showing how how we we were taking one square format across multiple different channels because we can see that square looks really good. But then when we've got specific types of layouts, whether it's reels or stories, we've shown how we can easily resize that. We get some extra options for uh, for Instagram. When we look at layouts like this, we could then post it as a reel or, or a story. We can edit our reel covers. The rest of the functions stay pretty similar. And then we're going to go ahead and add that as a draft here. So again, super easy for us to, to create single. This all started from that question about templates. So yeah. uh, all, <laughs> um, nice, easy way for you to, to take a template, remix it into different ways, different layouts, change it to add animation, and then allow you yourself to express yourself across multiple different uh, social channels uh, at the same time. So um, we should do quite- Thanks for the quite... tangent. Said, or Sharon said, Andy, you've made my express wishes come true. And a few yes. people are like really saying it's super helpful to see this, uh, how this all works together. So thanks for going Amazing. on that journey with yeah. us. <laughs> well, thanks for the, yeah, thanks for the question. Brilliant. So, so going back to, to where we were at before. So we had uh, created uh, a video. Well, I just shot this video on my phone yesterday. I regularly post, as you know, Jordan, every Tuesday, I post something to all of the social channels, which I create in Express, which is about what's happening in the world of social. Social media changes and updates is, is kind of my jam. So if you ever want to talk about what the future of social is, then I'm your guy for that. Anyway, yes. so, um, so now we've recorded it, as you can see, pretty simple face to camera. It was kind of early in the morning today, so it's pretty dark. So now we're going to bring this to life with Express. You will remember that we captioned this just a moment ago. So if we play it over, you can see we've got the captions here. Yes. Now the captions just, they're, they're not sitting in the right place right now. So we're gonna change this. We're gonna cut a bit of the start because I wanna see the bit where I actually start talking because no one just needs to look at my face. There you go. It's so um, nice and easy. 
I am like, going, not a pro in. video editor and I'll say I know you're not either. <laughs> so the fact that a you lot of that. this is a lot easy, a lot easier um than other things I've tried is so nice. Exactly. I am I'm definitely not one of those. So um what I'm gonna do is just move this up because I want a bit of space at the bottom because I want the captions to be really yeah, cool easy to see. Um so when you think about like accessibility and all that good stuff. Actually, that's something we'll Remind me about accessibility. I want to come back to that point. Uh, anyway, so we've got some uh, some captions in, so that looks all good. Now, um, we've also trimmed the edges, so that's fine. Um, but we want to change the the adjustments of this because that is far too dark at the moment. So uh, let's change the contrast a little bit. Uh, I'm going to increase the brightness to actually look like I had some lights on in the house this morning. Um, and maybe a little bit on the shadows few highlights I think I might increase the brightness just a little bit more and uh, decrease the warmth and I'm always a big fan of sharpen so there we go we started to look a lot better um so that looks that looks totally fine but of course this is you know a one and a half minutes of me talking to camera now um no one really needs to see that everyone needs to see something else a little bit more exciting so what we're going to do this is not new, but again, a really hidden thing that I absolutely love. Now, every time I go through or build one of these videos, I always focus on four news stories. And I want to make sure these news stories come to life in the things that I'm talking about so that people can see like the data and things that I'm talking to, talking about the trends, yada, yada. So uh, the first one of the things I wanted to call out is that uh, TikTok's growth rate has collapsed and... Um, where they see what's happening with with TikTok versus Instagram is very very interesting. I won't go into this now, uh, but uh, tic Instagram is now growing faster than TikTok because uh, the younger audiences are dropping out of TikTok left, right, and center, migrating back to Instagram. Really fascinating trend, which I won't get into right now because I love talking about this stuff too Stay much. Stay tuned for our monthly updates where Andy goes into all time. those nerdy details. <laughs> If you like stuff like that, then you'll yeah. like uh, you'll like our updates that we do every month. Anyway, so with something like this, I want to get this chart into my design. Now, um, I could screenshot it and then upload it into Express. That's kind of fine, but I can do something a bit cooler, I think. Uh, so I can right click it. So because I use Google Chrome and I have uh, Adobe Express installed as an extension, you can now click anything on the web, right click, and basically clip it into Express. So you press this button and it will just clip whatever that you, whatever you've selected. Of course, you could like create a design straight away off this. Naturally, I'm not gonna get into permission stuff whether you've got the rights to use it or rights to edit it. We'll save that for a, another stream, but you can, you can do it. So here, if now I've pressed this button, what's gonna happen is that this um, image that I've just clipped, and this is just as a bit of a reminder, this is a Chrome extension. If you use Google Chrome, you can go to the Chrome web store, search Adobe Express, and you'll find it. Um, once again, one of those really hidden things that I adore. So the other way that I use this tool is that I'm throughout the course of the month, as I see like new things happening, I will clip lots of these different things that I find. And then what happens is that they all go into my stuff. Now, uh, they all go to this folder that's called cloud content, which kind of defaults and creates a new folder for you. Oh, no, it's not in cloud content. Where is it? Uh, there you go. Sorry, Adobe Express Google Chrome. That would make more sense, wouldn't it? So it's in this one. Um, so as you can see, here's all the stuff that I've, I've been clipping related to, to the stuff I found on the web. Basically, I use this as my little ideas library. I'm sure we're um, you might be the same drawing where you're like using like oh, Apple yeah. notes on your phone or like taking screenshots of stuff, stuff you find. Um, so now I just kind of use Express for this ideation phase. So anyway, so now um, one of my news updates is talking about uh, these, the trend that's happening with, with TikTok versus Instagram. I can just click on this, the bit that I've just clipped, and I could add as a page in a project, but I don't want to do that in this instance because I want to add this as some media in... Uh, ignore that um it's a media in my project here we go we've just added it now whilst my some people would prefer this to cover up my face i'm just going to move it <laughs> like this i was just uh, thinking this is so helpful too because i have uh i have like a website with all my products and i have a library of all my product images somewhere but what i normally do when i need them is just go to my site and then like download them from that 
and then upload to whatever if I'm doing marketing projects or whatever and this would save me a whole lot of time by just pulling that this way. That's what we're all about. Saving yeah. time, Shin. Hopefully you found lots of different workflow improvements here. So now we've just added this. Uh, this is a really important button to toggle on, show layer timing. So anything that you brought into your project, you have multiple different layers here. Uh, you can easily adjust it. So I'm going to time the start and end of this because this is only just one part uh, of what I'm talking about here. And then going to animate this one. I want to slide in, slide in Fine. from the right. And then I want it sliding out, sliding out to the left. So there we go. Uh, in as easy as that, shot something on my phone, captioned the video, made it look like I've actually shot it with some lights on and decent production because I've <laughs> used the magic of, uh, magic of Express to make it look better. Uh, and then use the Google Chrome extension just to clip the things that I want to add and all the media that I want to add into this design. So whilst this use case won't be applicable for everyone, I hope this gives you some like some inspiration as to the way that you can create it. Uh, and then you can see in real life, here it is living in the wild. And wow. what's it got? And this is always, I'll always love this about an um, Instagram, sorry, LinkedIn analytics, where you can see uh, the performance, how many people, so 700 uh, minutes worth of viewing of that video I posted this morning's via Express. And you can see exactly who are the right people uh, that have been looking at your content. So. You can see end to end how you can build content, like create a really nice structural workflow, and you can see uh, the results that can be driven from delivering content in this way. That's wonderful. Oh, cool. You asked to remind about accessibility. Thank you so much because I was about to forget. And uh, let's just also dive. just FYI, we have like not a lot of time left. Which yeah. that was my job to remind you. Um, uh, <laughs> there's so much I new stuff. So much new stuff. I will I will flick onto mobile in just a sec, but um, I'm not going to demo anything on mobile. Add-ons. Don't forget oh, or yeah, sleep yeah, on yeah. add-ons. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Another one of those hidden things. Uh, so much cool stuff you can do here. Um, I haven't. We had. We did a, a live stream with TikTok a couple of weeks back where we spoke yeah. about creative assistant, so you can find trends on TikTok. No doubt that will feature in a few of our future videos, Jordan, but that is oh, so yeah. useful. Google Drive, OneDrive, lots of other things you can connect to Express. Um, but also in add-ons, there's tools to check accessibility. You know how I was just talking about like uh, the captions, are they easy enough to view? There's tools in here in, in your add-ons that will allow you to check your design for, um, I think it's, yeah, Attention Insight is one of them. Um, mm -hmm. This gives you the opportunity <laughs> to see, great. yeah, um, to see the parts of your design which are likely to get attention. The parts of your design that, um, for those that are maybe like partially sighted, for example, might struggle to see so many different things uh, that live uh, in here. So I won't go through all of them given time, but uh, don't sleep on them. They're Something really easy to play with. Like you literally just click and test, and then remove if you don't like it. Like you, these could not be easier <laughs> to test. Exactly. Out. Uh, and Jordan, you'll like this one because I've I've just heard about this one today. Yeah, this one's people... so fun. We always want to make gradients. And yeah. there's so many questions about gradients. So there you go. You can just, if you can't find it in Express as a, as a feature, you'll likely find it in add-ons. Yeah, check add-ons. And then I think if you, did you scroll all the way down? There's a request add-ons option if you scroll to the bottom, I Ooh. think. Yeah. I didn't know so that. So like our team is always trying to make sure we have exactly the add-ons that you want. So let us know what you want to see. Um, because these are being built out so th we always want feedback as you said but this is a great place um and yeah. really quick vanessa is asking i use premiere pro for my video edits for social if i upload a project into express from premiere will it upload with the individual layers i think the answer to that is no it'll just uh, upload as the finished project right yeah from premiere from premiere pro yes that's the case at the moment there's plans to address that uh, so right okay. now it's only Photoshop and Illustrator where you'd upload a file and it would have all of the uh, all of the designs. Yeah, and, all of and the designs, quick, all of the layers. Sorry. Oh no, great, thank you. And someone asked about voiceover. If you go to media and audio, you can um, you can add voiceover. So yep. media audio. There's a record voiceover. Yeah, or you yep. could if you had one pre-recorded, you could upload from device and upload your audio um, file. But yes, perfect. I love that take. Yeah, great questions. Cool. Uh, let me just go ahead and uh, I'm going to start sharing my phone screen now because we're going to talk about uh, 
we are going to talk about the mobile. The nice thing is you can basically do everything that we just showed you on your phone and it looks this or on desktop on your phone and it looks the same. So this should be <laughs> should be easy to find everything. Ah, uh, exactly, exactly. This is um this is in beta right now, but it's it's available for everyone to try out. And this is Express on the phone. So uh, a whole new take uh, on Adobe Express. Um, you'll notice, and this is, has been the, the challenge over the last year or so, where there's two different apps. The, the phone version on, on mobiles of Express doesn't sync with the new version on desktop that we've just been talking about. So now that all, all that problem goes away because now you have the ability to use this new version that we've been talking through throughout the course of today on desktop, mm -hmm. which brings some fascinating and brilliant, brilliant new tools. Most of the tools uh, that we've already spoken to about are in mobile, which creates quite an incredibly full featured mobile app. Um, always loving like some of the generative AI tools, which are given like the star of the show on mobile too. Uh, made generative fill even, even easier just by separating out, like remove objects yeah. or insert objects, because it sometimes isn't clear what you can do with it. So we love generative fill. Yeah, continue to play around with that. Brands uh, are here, center stage, so we can play with our brands, uh, add all of our, our designs, et cetera. And in case, um, we're doing something about this in future, but in case you miss it, here's where the, the schedule lives. And this creates kind of nice, nice 360 from what we we're just talking about. And this is again talking about like airdropping or sh transferring or whatever. Um, there are so many times I want to like start a template and then add images from my phone or add video clips from my phone. Or if you don't want to use an express template, you can just upload your content uh, with the plus sign too. So if there's a photo or a video, you just want to add the fact that you can schedule from your phone. Like this is. I'm so happy. I'm so, so oh, happy. Oh yes. Oh yes. And you know, there's there's a couple of other little things that I wanna I wanna show you. So so here all of the multi-account publishing works here. We can add our connections on uh on mobile. You'll see, see these little dots as well, which is really nice to see like what's happening tomorrow. So these little dots in the calendar show us when mm -hmm. we've got content scheduled scheduled for. You can see the ones that we've just created uh as we were going through that flow earlier. See all of that highlighted here. So you'll notice that we've we've scheduled content across multiple different brands uh, in this instance. Sometimes if you're doing this for multiple brands, whether it's like maybe you're looking after a client and you really want to segment them out and say like, what content do I have going out for my personal brand or maybe a client? So you've got this handy little filters button in the top right. So oh, if I want to look at anything. For that. I didn't know <laughs> about this. I knew I was going to learn a lot today. <laughs> I always learn a lot from you, Andy. <laughs> Oh, Which I should I should know more than I do sometimes, but that's very cool. It's actually, I mean, to be honest, that the filters does exist on desktop, kind of easier to miss on desktop well, than it is on mobile. It's... So, um, <laughs> but either either way, it's there, super useful, and we can obviously click into any content. We can change anything that we want to yeah. if we need to, uh, and of course, we can say like, you know what, I'm not ready to post that tomorrow, and as that's in draft, I could uh, adjust the copy and then you know, schedule it and, and put it live, but I'm obviously not going to do that right now. We can just go and adjust it. And I think sometimes this is super powerful when, you know, let's say you're on the road and, you know, something's happened. Maybe you just need to change plans at the last minute. It's nice to think that you've got all the control from your from your device to do that. And uh, just another thing, just as a, uh, as another call out. So here. you have one minute. <laughs> got one minute. Uh, one thing to mention is when you're on video, we've just added this as well this week is that if you have multiple different scenes in your video, this is just one scene in this instance, but if you've got multiple different scenes, like we've got, like I'll just add another scene here very quickly. Uh, as we add scenes, we can press this plus button and then we can add transitions between the scenes. So like little fades, cross fades, that kind of thing. So uh, with that, with my one minute, I reckon <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're probably done with all of the newness in Express. Oh my God. Thank you so much for going through all of that, Andy. And uh, Jay Kwan in the chat said, great information, guys. And thanks for sharing your tips and talents with us beginners. Um, and Damien said this was their first live stream. So if you want to see more like this, there's a lot of other videos from us and other cool creators on the Adobe Live channel. Everything is available as a replay. We'll be back in a couple weeks. Um, and yeah, thank you all so much. I am Jordan Danae Ellis, and this is 
Andy Lambert, and we're available for all of your express needs and questions, even when we're not live. So feel free to ping <laughs> us. <laughs> this is what we do all day, every day. And we'll, we love your feedback. We love your questions. Uh, we're incorporating a lot of it in, right, like directly into express, as you just saw. For those of you who have been asking for the features Andy just showed, we're so happy that they're here. Um, and we're always working to make this product exactly what we all need it to be. So thanks Back for doing all the hard work this week, Andy. Um, and thanks everyone for joining us. Anything I'm missing? No, rounded out perfectly. Thanks so much, awesome. everyone. Thanks everyone. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thanks, Paco. Cool.